Number 19. Explain how the volume of the bubbles exhausted by a scuba diver, figure 9.16, change as they rise to the surface, and assuming that they remain intact. So here's the figure that they were talking about, figure 9.16. It's a lovely picture, but do we really need this picture to answer the question? No. So no one cares. Okay. (laughs) The thing that we need to know is basically the combined gas law, which is this. This is more important. This is going to give us the answer. Maybe I'll make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so the combined gas law basically gives a relationship between four different variables. P stands for pressure. So we have pressure going on in here. V stands for volume. T stands for temp or temperature. And then N stands for the number of moles. So there's four different units going on here. Basically, if you want to talk about why things are changing, you only need to pick out two out of the four units. Now, they gave us one of them. They want us to focus on what the volume is doing. So I know that I have to keep volume in my formula. The best thing or the great thing about the combined gas law is that if you don't want to discuss a variable, you say that it's held constant and the variable is bye-bye. We'll see that in literally maybe 10 seconds. We now have to pick out what is the next best variable to discuss with the volume. Well, this scuba diver is rising to the surface. So what can be affected as the scuba diver is rising to the surface? Is the pressure going to be a change, the temperature, or the number of moles? Yeah, definitely not the number of moles, right? We can't really picture that in our head. So if we don't care about a variable, that goes bye-bye. And it goes bye-bye on both sides. Beautiful. So now think about, you know, you diving in an in-ground pool, right? As you go all the way down. When I was a little kid, I used to dive all the way down to the pool, down to the bottom of the pool to catch these rings. You would throw the rings, they would sink to the bottom, and I would love to go down there and and fetch them. But as I went down there, my ears would become, they would pop because it was so pressurized down there. But as I rose to the top, my ears felt better because the pressure was changing. So we could link this to pressure. It's easier to talk about it in terms of pressure than temperature. And if we don't care about that other variable, that goes bye-bye. So bye-bye temp. Bye-bye temp. And now I can get rid of these. Look at that. This is lovely now. So now I just have P1 V1 equals P2 V2. Let me just pull this down a little bit. Beautiful. Okay. So, Now, we have to just focus on what's going on here. These two variables, are they a direct relationship with each other or an indirect relationship? Remember, if two variables are being multiplied by each other and they're both in either the numerator or the denominator, this is an indirect relationship. And that's what's going on here. An indirect relationship means that if one thing increases, the other one, and maybe I'll pull this a little bit over here, the other one has to decrease, and then vice versa. If x goes down, y has to go up. A direct relationship would be if you saw them on uh, one on top of the other, one in the numerator, one in the denominator. But here, they're both you know, on the numerator because this would now be over one. So this would be an indirect relationship. So now we can discuss what's going on with the change. They wanted to explain how the volume changes as you rise to the surface. Well, just know that, you know, this is a common common information. As you go deeper into the ocean, right, as you dive deep, the pressure will get higher. So you have much more pressure, you know, around you as you go deeper and deeper and deeper down into the water. So as you're coming up for air, 
the pressure is going to decrease. And this idea keeps going up and up and up and up and up. So as you're going up and up and up in altitude, the pressure is dropping. So like the pressure on top of Mount Everest would be so low and the pressure in the the depths of the deep blue sea is so high. So now we're rising to the surface. We're coming up for air. So if that's the case, my pressure would be decreasing, right? Because we're coming up for air. So now what's going to happen to the volume? Well, if the pressure is dropping and this is an indirect relationship, the volume of those bubbles would have to increase. So as you come up to the surface, the bubbles, so as you come up to the surface, the bubbles are going to get bigger and a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. As you go down, they will get smaller and smaller and smaller. And that's basically the answer. Explain how the volume of the bubbles change. As you come up to the surface, the bubbles will get much, much, much bigger. So here's my scuba diver. I mean, this person's all the way at the floor, it looks like. And look how small these bubbles are. You can barely see them. But as they go up and up and up, they will get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So hopefully this makes sense. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. And I hope to see you in later lessons. Check out our channel. We also got a physics videos and math videos. So if you're in pre-calc or geometry or trig, we might be able to help you out or physics as well. So go check it out. Thank you so much. And I will see you all later. Bye-bye.